I've uh, I've he I have heard this before, and uh, but uh, have had it brought back to my attention again that uh, the church world is losing the young people because the church has not um, prepared them really or equipped them to go into their schools with a firm faith in Scripture. Um, just like Finnis Dake so many years ago uh, was trying to answer so-called science when Darwin and all those were so popular and he, he felt like if there really were millions and billions of years that it surely must be able to be proven in the Bible. And so he uh, came up with the gap theory, as it's known, that there was this, uh, this time that isn't in the Bible that uh, would allow for science to be right, as though science supersedes the Bible. And this is, this is the great deception. And uh, today it's pretty rampant. I talk to more and more people who will question the book of Genesis. And beloved, if you can tear up the book of Genesis, you might as well throw the whole Bible away. Yeah. It's just that simple. And I thank God for ministries uh, that, are, uh, that are heralding the accuracy of Scripture and those kinds of things, because if ever we need it, we need it now. Uh, and I would encourage you, don't, don't ever, whatever science says, I would just get a little smile on your face and say, I already know what God says. And science is still trying to catch up. I said, they're still trying to catch up. It, uh, you know, they're so authoritative, just like Darwin was, so authoritative. This is the way it is, you know, and... Uh, you Christians, you're but just a bunch of goofballs if you believe this stuff in the Bible because they're, they're, we, can, we can work through this. Well, then they came up with, well, you know, the Bible does say that a thousand years is, with a, is a day, and a day is, is a thousand years to God, and so, you know, who knows, but the seven days of creation could have been a thousand years apiece. And so goes the logic. Uh, it's interesting, though, that the evening and the morning constituted a day. That's a pretty long day, a thousand years. Uh, the earth would have had to have been turning so slow and the sun moving so slow that I think we'd be crispy critters by now. Besides, nothing would have stayed on the planet. I mean, if we really think about it, then, and we should, uh, then I think we can we can come to a place to where we have an answer. We're supposed to have an answer, see? And we should have an answer. And I, I just want to, uh, got a lot of dry, uh, which may be dry to some, but thrilling to others, uh, information. Uh, there's so much. You can go on the Internet today. You can look up the young earth uh, scientists, young world science, uh, creation, science, uh, there's a whole slew of scientists from all the different disciplines that are willing to accept at least the possibility of a creator. And when it, once you do that, just even accept the possibility, you don't have to be a believer necessarily, but if, if you will accept the possibility of a creator, science just glaringly points to a creator. And that's quite disturbing to an atheist or an agnostic, uh, to someone who's been influenced by the spirit of Antichrist. But, and the war goes on in our universities. It's very hard to get a chair unless you are evolutionary minded, unless you are liberal minded. And uh, this should not be. Uh, places of learning really should give place to all uh, 
streams of thought. That's where dialogue should take place. That's where questions should be asked and answers developed, if there can be answers. Uh, I remember, uh, and I've mentioned this before, when Sharon and I were younger, uh, the great fear of everybody, and, and many were profiting from this fear, was that the glaciers at the North Pole and South Pole were growing. We were going back into an ice age, and Los Angeles, which is quite a ways from the North Pole, which is where we live uh, in that area, was going to be pushed into the sea by this, this huge glacier. And it was only going to take a few years. I guess, I don't remember the, the person's name that really uh, heralded all of this great wisdom and understanding, but today we would call him Al Gore because he's gone clear the other way and he says, now everything's melting and we're going to drown. And I laughed about it when they first said it, but I'll tell you, people have made a fortune based on false science. You can, you can play the numbers. Statistics are, are, can be so manipulated. And uh, so we've got, we've got to take another look and especially encourage our young people, our teachers, to, uh, you know, to, to teach uh, the, the young that they have a firm foundation in the Scripture. Uh, I've always liked it, you know, when... Uh, Job was questioning, and God said, where were you when I did it all? Yeah. Well, pure science demands that you can observe the event before you make a, you know, say, this is, this is how this works. You've got to be able to observe it, and of course, nobody was there, so there's a lot of speculation. I, I just want to very, well, I don't know how quickly, but I'll go as quickly as I can, give you just, just 14 natural phenomena which conflict with the evolutionary idea that the universe is billions of years old. Because now for the evolutionists to, uh, to, to make things work, they need at least 3 billion years. It used to be a few million, but it never worked. The numbers don't crunch. And so they just keep adding years to, to try and prove that what they believe is true. But there's just an awful lot of supposition that uh, we need to understand. And, and there's so many other evidences, but here's just a few. Firstly, the galaxies widen themselves up too fast. The stars of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, which uh, most of us are probably familiar with, rota rotate around the, the galactic center with different speeds. The inner ones rotate faster than the outer ones. The observed rotation speeds are so fast that if our galaxy were more than a few hundred million years old, it would be a featureless disk of stars instead of its present spiral shape. So... There goes the three billion years. Anyway, there's too few supernova remnants. According to astronomical uh, uh, observations, galaxies like our own experience about one supernova, which is a violently exploding star, every 25 years. The gas and dust remnants from those explosions, like the Crab Nebula, expand outward rapidly and should remain visible for over a million years. Yet the nearby parts of our galaxy in which we could observe such gas and dust shells contain only about 200 supernova nova remnants. That number is consistent with only about 7,000 years worth of supernovas. We're getting a little closer to the biblical idea that everything is about 6,000 years old. Uh, comets disintegrate too quickly is another thing. According to evolutionary theory, comets are supposed to be the same age as the solar system, about five billion years. Yet each time a comet orbits close to the sun, it loses so much of its material, it could not survive much longer than 100,000 years. Many comets have typical ages of less than 10,000 years. Evolutionist explanations of this discrepancy are based upon unprovable assumptions. Assumptions are wonderful things. 
we can assume a lot of things. Uh, anyway, there's not enough mud on the seafloor. Each year, water and winds erode about 20 billion tons of dirt and rock from the continents and deposit it in the ocean. Uh, when I first read this, I thought, you know, it's a miracle there's any land at all left. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of dirt. But this material accumulates in loose sediment on a hard basaltic lava-formed rock of the ocean floor. The average depth of all sediment in the ocean is less than 400 meters. According to evolutionary theory, erosion and plate subductions have been going on as long as the oceans have existed, an alleged 3 billion years. If that were so, the rates above imply the oceans would be massively choked with sediment dozens of kilometers deep. An alternative, the creationist explanation is that erosion from the waters of the Genesis flood running off the continents deposited the present amount of sediment within a short time, about 5,000 years ago. Another one, not enough sodium in the sea. Every year, rivers, other sources dump over 450 million tons of sodium into the ocean. Calculations for sodium and many other seawater elements give much younger ages for the ocean than the three billion years that are estimated by evolutionists. See, there, there, there's so much uh, liberty taken to try to prove that somehow, Somehow, everything must have come into being without a creator. You understand, if you recognize there is a creator, you, rec you must recognize that you are answerable to that creator, which seems to be the problem. Another one, the Earth's magnetic field is decaying too fast. Many theories abound, but the creationist theory exists. It's straightforward, based on sound physics, explains many features of, of the field. It's creation, rapid reversals during the Genesis flood, surface intensity decreases and increases until the time of Christ, a steady decay since then. And this theory matches, I can't even pronounce these words, paleomagnetic, historic, and present data, most startlingly with evidence for rapid changes. The main result is the field's total energy, not surface intensity, has always decayed at least as fast as now. At that rate, the field could not be more than 20,000 years old. I mean, that's a long way for three billion, three billion, isn't it? Many strata are too tightly bent. In many mountainous areas, strata thousands of feet thick are bent and folded into hairpin shapes. The conventional ge geologic time scale says these formations were deeply buried and solidified for hundreds of millions of years before they were bent. Yet the folding occurred without cracking, with radii so small the entire formation had to still be wet and unsolidified when the bending occurred. This implies the folding occurred less than thousands of years after its deposit. Biological material decays too fast. Natural radioactivity, mutations, decay, degrade DNA, other biological material rapidly. Measurements of the mutation rate of uh, mitochondrial DNA recently forced researchers to revise the age of mitochondrial Eve from a theorized 200,000 years down to possibly as low as 6,000 years. DNA experts insist DNA cannot exist in natural environments longer than 10,000 years, yet intact strands of DNA appear to have been recovered from fossils allegedly much older. Neanderthal bones, insects in amber, even from dinosaur fossils. Bacteria allegedly 250 million years old apparently have been revived with no DNA damage. Soft tissue and blood cells from a dinosaur have astonished Experts, they should wake up and smell the roses and understand that, uh, you know, there were dinosaurs before the flood <laughs> in, in, this, in this created age. 
my, my, and so on. Fossil radioactivity shortens geologic ages to a few years. Squashed polonium-210 radio halos indicate that Jurassic, Triassic, and Eocene formations in the Colorado Plateau were deposited within months of one another, not hundreds of millions of years apart, as required by the conventional timelines. Then there's too much helium in minerals. Uranium and thorium generate helium atoms as they decay to lead. A study published in the Journal of Geophysical Research showed that such helium produced as in zircon crystals in deep, hot, Precambrian granite rock has not had time to escape, though the rocks contain 1.5 billion years worth of nuclear decay products, newly measured rates of helium loss from zircon show the helium has been leaking for only 6,000 years, plus or minus 2,000. Why can't we just believe what the Bible says? It's a historical record. It's absolutely historically accurate. They're still digging up cities that are proving it again and again as being historically accurate. Why then can it not be all the way through from cover to cover and also spiritually accurate? See, these are things that our young people need to understand. These are things we need to understand because uh, you know, the challenge is uh, uh, the onslaught against Christian thinking in this hour is huge. Uh, they're trying, really, they're, there's just so much in the secular community trying to do away with Christianity, or any religion for that matter, completely. So it's going to be more and more important for you and I and those who follow us to understand the accuracy and the authority and the immutability of the Bible. This is not only evidence of the youth of the earth, but also for episodes of greatly accelerated decay rates of long half-life nuclei within thousands of years ago, compressing radioisotope timescales enormously. In other words, things don't look like some people say they look. Amen. Okay, then there's too much carbon-14 in deep geologic strata. Within their short 5,700-year half-life, no carbon-14 atom should exist in any carbon older than 250,000 years. Yet it has proven impossible to find any natural source of carbon below the uh, Pleistocene or the Ice Age strata that does not contain significant amounts of carbon-14, even though such strata are supposed to be millions or billions of years old. Conventional carbon-14 laboratories have been aware of this anomaly since the early 1980s, have striven to eliminate it, are unable to account for it, and lately the world's best such laboratory has learned during two d decades of low C14 measurements, how not to contaminate specimens externally. Under contract to creationists, confirm such observations for coal samples, even for a dozen diamonds, which cannot be contaminated in situ with recent carbon. These constitute very strong evidence the Earth is only thousands, not billions, of years old. Wow, okay. Uh, this, this is, these, these are only, you know, this is only one article by one uh, uh, doctor, uh, and, and there are many. And uh, so, you know, if you really want to understand, you really want to see what's be going on outside of the public media, outside of, you know, what uh, the uh, secular scientific so-called community wants you to hear, it's available now. We're living in a tremendous age if we just know where to look and are willing to consider. There's not enough Stone Age skeletons. Here's another one. Evolutionary anthropologists now say that Homo sapiens existed for at least 185,000 years before agriculture began, during which time the world population of humans was roughly constant between 1 and 10 million. 
All that time, they were burying their dead, often with artifacts. And by that scenario, they would have buried at least 8 billion bodies. If the evolutionary timescale is correct, buried bones should be able to last for much longer than 200,000 years. So many of the supposed 8 billion Stone Age skeletons found st uh, <laughs> should still be around, and certainly the buried artifacts. Yet only a few thousand have been found. This implies the Stone Age was much shorter than evolutionists think, perhaps only a few hundred years in many areas. A thirteenth point, the agriculture is too recent. The usual evolutionary picture has men existing as hunters and gatherers for 185,000 years during the Stone Age before discovering agriculture less than 10,000 years ago. Yet the archaeological evidence shows that Stone Age men were as intelligent as we are. It's very improbable that none of the eight billion people mentioned in, you know, the, the previously should discover that plants grow from seeds. It's more likely that men were without agriculture for a very short time after the flood, if at all. Then uh, lastly, for tonight anyway, history is just too short. According to evolutionists, Stone Age Homo sapiens existed for 190,000 years before beginning to make written records about 4,000 to 5,000 years ago. Prehistoric man built megalithic monuments, made beautiful cave paintings, kept records of lunar phases. Why would he wait 2,000 years before using the same skills to record history? The biblical time scale is much more likely. Amen. Well, what does the Bible clearly tell us? Well, Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. I, I think it's very interesting, too. You know, it, it said that he, he said, he saw, he said, he saw, he said, he saw, he said, he saw. And uh, uh, there's a lot of research right now that has been looking at what the smallest particles of matter are. And when they got down to where they'd found a quark, they thought they had the smallest particle that, that would, could be found. And then they went on further, and as they researched the quark, now they have found, they, 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 haven't, they haven't come out and said it's absolute, but they, have, they are now considering that the absolute most minute particle of matter is a sound wave. God said, my, my, well, you know, <laughs> knowledge is supposed to be poured out in the last day, so hopefully. Okay, so to create, this word create, in the beginning God created, bara, originate, establish, institute, generate, produce. Funk and Wagnalls, to cause, to come into existence, to originate. The big biblical meaning is that of absolute origination. God did it. Creationism is the doctrine that the universe was originally brought into existence without preexistent material by the Word of God. And, and most of the theories, Big Bang theories, and all, all these various th theories that are out there still all need something to have done something to become. They still cannot go to the place where they say nothing became something. And yet that's exactly what God said, <laughs> that nothing became something. <laughs> Also, that a new species or, or forms of being have been successfully produced by the direct formative exercise of divine wisdom and power, Genesis 1.21. And God created great whales and every living creature that moves, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw it was good. It was good. Genesis 1.27, so God created man, mankind, in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. You, are, you, you don't have a monkey for an uncle. It, it is not from goo to you by way of the zoo. 
Uh, it just doesn't hold up at all, anywhere. <coughs> Genesis 2, 3 through 4, And God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God created and made. These are the generations of the heaven and of the earth when they were created in the day the Lord God made the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. Again, to create, bara. Hallelujah. It's Genesis 2, 8, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put man which he had formed. Yetzar, formed. Uh, squeezing into shape, it's interesting, to mold into a form, especially as a potter. Earthen, fashion, form, frame, make, uh, with a purpose. Well, that's what the Bible said he did. He formed man out of the earth of the ground, right? Out of the ground, out of the earth. Then he breathed life into him. So the, it, 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 the <laughs> Hebrews 11, 1, the basis of the doctrine is right there for the creation of divine revelation accepted by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hebrews 11.6. Hebrews 11.1. 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.3. Through faith, we understand. I said through faith, not blind faith. And I, that's so important. Uh, I have talked to some people who are people of, quote, unquote, they're people of faith, but they're Faith is based on fairy tales. It's blind faith. There's nothing provable. We, our faith is based upon the historical record that God gave us of his dealings with man, his creation of the earth and his dealings with man. We're, it's not blind faith. We have faith in the one who gave us the book that has been proven over and over and over and over again to be absolutely accurate. In fact, it declares itself to be the truth. So it's no wonder. <coughs> Romans 4, 17. I made you a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. And nothing becomes something when God speaks. We understand the worlds are framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. It all ties it together. The whole basis of our understanding creation is we are a people of faith. Spiritual truth cannot be understood, remember, until one is born again. The mind of man, the natural mind of man, is at enmity with God. It hates God, it hates the things of God, and it cannot comprehend the truth of God. I mean, there's a lot of people running around calling themselves Christians. They believe in God. They may even say they believe in Jesus, but they don't have a real relationship with him and have never then been born again. And so they really don't understand and will never understand. 1 Corinthians 2.14, the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. No wonder Harvard, Yale, Princeton, all of our great institutes of learning, when they first began, were primarily Bible colleges. And they recognized Scripture, biblical knowledge, as the highest science without which no other science could be understood. I think we need to go back to that. So everything here glorifies God and shows his workmanship. Psalm 19, 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows his handiwork. In other words, the work of his hands. Hallelujah. Psalm 148, 3 through 5. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all the stars of light. Praise him, you heaven of heavens, ye waters that be above the heavens, let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. Whoo! Well, so where does Jesus fit in all this? 
John 1, verse 1 through 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and life was the light of men. You know, everything's held together by the word of his power. Somebody once said, I thought it was an interesting uh, uh, view. They said, Jesus is the sticky stuff that holds everything together. (laughs) (coughs) Anyway, Uh, Colossians 1, 16 through 17, for by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible, invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things exist. So every angelic being, be it God's angels or the devil and his fallen angels, everything created by Jesus. Without him, they were not created. Therefore, he is Lord overall. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hebrews 1.10, And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Revelation 3.14, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Hallelujah. So all things were created by his command. Psalm 148.1, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise him all ye angels, praise him all ye hosts, praise him sun and moon, praise him all stars of light, praise him ye heaven of heavens and ye waters that be above the heavens, let them praise the name of the Lord for he commanded and they were created. Hallelujah. He had part in creation, you see. Genesis 1, 2, the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. See? The Holy Spirit we're talking about. He had part in it, too. We're we're Trinitarian. I, I know the word's not in the Bible. It just simply is a word that means we understand there is one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's just, it's in the Nicene Creed. It's everywhere. It's solid. We're accused of being, of, of being uh, you know, uh, uh, of being a religion that worships multiple gods. We don't. We believe in the one true living God who has revealed himself as Father, as Son, as Holy Spirit. Do we understand it? No, no more than we understand that we are a spirit being. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. He created us after his image and his likeness. He created us to be spiritual beings, spirit beings. We're speaking spirits. We have a soul, the seat of our will, our intellect, our emotions. The spirit and soul will never be separated. We live in a body. Thank God I'm going to get a new one one of these days. Woo! Glory to God. I'm glad this one's wearing as well as it is. But uh, I'm all for a new one. It'll be all right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So uh, (laughs) that's a pretty exciting prospect. So the Holy Spirit had a part in creation. Uh, Psalm 104.30, Thou sendest forth thy spirit, They are created. Thou renewest the face of the earth. In Corinthians, we can can read that God the Father is the institutor, that God the Son is the administrator, and that God the Holy Spirit is the manifester. Hallelujah. Working together, perfect harmony. harmony. Working as one. And yet he, God has given us enough uh, revelation of himself, <laughs> enough to confuse us, but enough <laughs> to where we can, we can relate to him 
uh, as human beings, even though he is God. He gives us glimpses into how his personality, his personhood works. And, uh, of course, all kinds of funny doctrines have been developed to try and explain it. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've just got to go back to the way we're created, and then I still haven't figured an egg out. It has a shell, it has a white, it has a yolk, but it's an egg. <laughs> and there's a lot of other things that uh, speak the same kind of this triunity, praise the Lord, that we call the Trinity. Job 33, 4, the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. So the more pure science learns, the more proof there will be of God as creator of everything. And so I, I would leave us uh, uh, to remember. It's impossible, remember, it's impossible for unregenerate, that's not born again, unregenerate man to come to a full knowledge of the truth. 2 Timothy 3, 7. And, and there are brilliant people who are not born again. I mean, brilliant people. But they will never come to a full knowledge of truth until they're born again. 2 Timothy 3, 7, ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. There'll be a falling away in the latter days, which I think we're getting closer and closer to all the time if we're not in them already. 1 Timothy 4, 1, now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. This is exactly what we are seeing today. And of course, there's, there's a lot of verses that talk about how self-centered the latter-day society will be, and we are certainly in it. We will not be disappointed. Hebrews 10.23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful to his promise. Hallelujah. If we can't believe the Genesis, we cannot believe in our salvation. You can't tear out the pages of Genesis and still believe in the seed of the woman. See, it's critical. And I thank God that there are ministries that have, that have just, you know, staunchly hung on to the, the book of Genesis is the key to everything. It's the foundation. And you tear up the... And that's where all the attacks came. Darwinism and everything else has come at the book of Genesis because if it can be... If it can be become less questionable or less than absolute truth, then the Savior can also be questioned. And he can't be. He must not be. Uh, the, the stakes are too high. Thank God we know him. But what about the, the multiplied, I don't know, millions that don't? But the Bible says we won't be disappointed. And, and God holds his word above his name, and it's never going to be invalidated. If we believe, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Not a way, a truth, a life. There aren't multiple ways to God. He said, no one, no man can come to the Father but by me. I, he is the truth. So all truth is resident in him. The Bible declares itself to be true. Thy word is truth. And it does it again and again. And, and, and simply says that, uh, well, Luke 21, 33, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Now, God said that. If God can lie, we have a serious problem. But he can't. There's no variableness, no shadow of turning in him. He watches over what he has said to make sure it does what he said it will do. That, that, and he's challenged us. Say what you mean and mean what you say. 
walk your talk. <laughs> and if you vow a vow, in other words, you make a pledge, you tell somebody you're going to do something, and then the time comes for you to perform it, you've got to do it even to your own hurt. That's how important your word is. Yes. And of course, in the secular community, and unfortunately in many Christian circles, that is not necessarily the way things are. And yet that is the way God has designed things to work. He, he watches over his word. He honors his word. His word, he says, I have, well, here it is, Psalm 138.2, and I'll close with this. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For you have magnified your word above all of your name. That's where we get the phrase, a man is only as good as his word. Hallelujah. I hope that's helped you and given you some uh, confidence that what you believe is provable by more than one source. And science, so-called, is uh, really struggling. But uh, pure science is proving, day by day, the total validity of everything that God's Word has said. Father, we thank you. We praise you tonight that thy Word is truth, that our faith is not blind faith, that we are grounded in truth. And Lord, we pray that you will keep us in truth and that we will have the ability, Lord, the strength of character, that uncompromised faith to stand no matter what is said or done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hi, I'm Pastor George Stover. The Wellspring Church of All Nations, right here at 8140 West Lone Mountain Road in Las Vegas. And there's also a, an entrance at 4870 Janelle Drive. We have services at 1045 in Sunday morning and 6 p.m. and also on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. because we want to be available to you. It's our heart, it's our calling to invest in your life, to help you if that's at all possible. To, to just have an improved life, a more joy-filled life, a spirit-filled life, if you will. We want to introduce you to Jesus Christ because God so loved you that he gave Jesus, his only begotten son, so that you would not perish, but you'd have everlasting life. Jesus said he came uh, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And so our, our whole calling and our our plan and purpose for our lives is just to invest in you and to help you get to know uh, God in Christ Jesus so that uh, you can be all that God meant you to be. I, I realize this world is so torn, uh, so strife-ridden. There's terror, there's uh, torment, there's personal things that have happened in your lives that have just been devastating, but you know what? God wants to heal you, your emotions. And, and your thought life. And he's able to do that and has done it time and time again. Uh, I, I'm a testimony of the goodness of God. You would not believe where I came from. But at 32 years of age, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Everything has changed. But I want to invite you, come, be with us, right here at Wellspring Church of All Nations. And see if God won't touch you. See if your life won't be transformed and changed as you receive the truth of the word of God and the touch of the spirit of the living God. He's here. We're here. All we need is you. And we do need you. And you need us. And we pray that we can come together and just be a blessing to each other. And we can... We can Find our purpose and plan in God and just move toward it. We'll help you do that. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.